Hello and welcome back to the fifth video in the series for Topic 1 System Fundamentals. This time we're going to be evaluating alternative installation processes. And this is for the IB Diploma Program in Computer Science. So here we go, Topic 1, still part of the um, core syllabus for standard level and higher level. And as you can see here for this first part in Systems in Organizations, we're currently here. Okay, so when transitioning from one system to another, organizations must choose the most appropriate method of implementation or conversion. Each method has distinct advantages and disadvantages, and the choice will depend on specific needs and constraints of the organization. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to evaluate and compare different system installation processes, including direct changeover, phase conversion, parallel running and pilot running with a focus on their advantages, disadvantages and practical applications in various organizational contexts. So this video will cover definition of system installation processes, detailed analysis, impact on training and workforce and choosing the right method. Okay, so definition of system installation processes. We've got direct changeover. Basically what this is, direct changeover involves an intermediate and complete switch from the old system to a new system. It's cost effective, there's no need to maintain two systems simultaneously, you're swapping from one to the other. Immediate readiness, a new system is fully operational immediately. Obviously there's no fallback option if the new system was to fail or there were to be problems, there's a high risk. Immediate impact on operations if issues arise. Okay, so you've got your advantages and disadvantages. A good example of this might be switching to a new email platform overnight. And here we go, old system, we've got a cutoff point, a deadline before we switch over to a new system. So imagine, I've got PS5 here, imagine you get a brand new video games console and stop playing with the old one right away. Basically you sell it, you could sell it and then with the money buy yourself a PlayStation 5. It's the fastest and least expensive way to switch, but what if you lose all your progress in your old games? Okay, direct changeover is just like that. You immediately switch to the new system and stop using the old one. If something goes wrong with the new system, it can cause big problems. Okay, phase conversion implementation. Phase conversions involves gradually implementing the new system in stages while still running the old system. Advantages to this is testing opportunities. Each part can be thoroughly tested. Gradual learning, staff can learn the new system step by step up to a specific deadline when the, when the changeover will take place. Disadvantages, um, complexity challenge, difficult to manage and coordinate, partial backup issues, potential disruption if a part of the system fails. Gradual moving departments to a new ERP and enterprise resource planning system might be a good example of this. Okay, and here we go. The old system gradually being phased out and replaced by the new system. So imagine your school gets a new website, here we go. They start by adding new information to the new site, but keep the old one with all the existing info. Gradually, they move the old stuff to the new site so they can start using the new one more and more. It's a smoother way to switch, and eventually the old site is completely replaced. Okay, parallel running. Parallel running involves operating both the old and the new system simultaneously for a period of time. Backup availability, old system serves as a backup. Um, direct comparison of the old and new systems. You can compare and contrast to the new system if needed to based on the older system. There's high costs, expensive to maintain two systems at the same time. And it's resource in intensive. Employees need to work with both systems at the same time. Running both old and new accounting software until the new system is validated would be a good example of parallel running. Okay, here we've got, um, I've got my, Atari, my old Atari 2600 and the PlayStation 5. Think of having two games consoles and you play the same game on both. It's extra work. But if one console gets issues, you can still play on the other. So if you're playing the old 1980s version of Pac-Man on this, and you've got a sort of a version of this and this one breaks and on the PS5, you can switch back to your old, um, your old Atari if you like Pac-Man that much. Parallel running is like that. You use both the old and new systems at the same time. Once you're sure the new system works well, you can stop using the old one, okay? Using at the same time, and then when we're happy, we switch. Okay, and then finally, pilot running. What is this? Pilot running involves implementing the new system in a small control segment of the organization first. Um, risk mitigation, issues identified and resolved on small scale. 
feedback opportunities, valuable feedback from a limited user group. There's limited scope. Success in the pilot phase doesn't guarantee full-scale success. Resource allocations, resource intensity to monitor the pilot phase separately. Okay, introducing a new CRM, a customer relations management system into one department before a full rollout. And here we go. So old system, pilot system, running them simultaneously, and then we switch to the new system. In pilot running, the new system is like a trial run. It's testing the sm with a small group in the organization first. Once everything works smoothly and any issues are fixed, it's rolled out to everybody. So this pilot system becomes the new system for everyone. Okay, so let's have a look at the impact on training in the workforce. Training requirements, comprehensive training programs, regular sessions to familiarize staff with the new system, support resources, help desks, user manuals and online resources, workforce restructuring, new roles and responsibilities, align the workforce with new system capabilities and hiring additional staff. Bring an expertise required for the new system if it is needed. So choosing the right method, factors to consider, organizational needs, specific requirements and constraints, system complexity, complexity of the new system, risk tolerance, willingness to accept potential risks, resource availability, availability of financial and human resources. And then we've got risk management, which involves backup plans, have contingency plans in place, testing phases, thorough testing at each stage of the implementation, and feedback mechanisms, continuous feedback and improvement processes of anything that might go wrong or need changing. As always, I've given you some past paper exam questions. I'll give you the questions here, then I will give the answers after. If you want to pause the video at this point, go through these questions and then compare them with mine, that is up to you. Okay, so question one, define and compare two common installation processes, direct changeover and parallel running. Provide an example for each. Question two, explain the advantages and disadvantages of direct changeover as an installation process. Provide a real world example of when direct changeover might be suitable. Question three, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of parallel running as an installation process. Provide a real world scenario where parallel running would be beneficial. And then finally, question four, evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of phased implementation. Provide a real world scenario where phased implementation is a suitable approach. Okay, so question one, I've gone into a great deal of detail here. Direct changeover, the advantages and disadvantages, parallel running, again with an example, advantages and disadvantages. Question two, again, advantages, direct changeover, disadvantages of direct changeover, and then we've got an example going on here. Question three, again, advantages, disadvantages, and an example, and the same for phased implementation. I hope you found it useful. Um, until next time, thank you very much indeed for watching. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.